I'm going to talk about linear regression. This topic should be really review for you. Um, you, you might have studied linear regression in other units uh, or even in your undergrad. Um, in any case, I strongly advise you to read the, the, some of the subchapters of, of chapter three of the book, Introduction to um, Statistical Learning. Um, and I'm going to give you now an overview about, uh, about uh, the, this, this, uh, this section. So we're we going to use as a motivation example this data set, which is uh, taken from a registry of uh, um, densitometries. So I have 169 uh, records of densitometry. So densitometry is an exam that measures the, the bone mineral density uh, in, and it can be taken in, in different parts of the, the, the body. In this case, it's going to be uh, uh, densitometries of the hip. Um, and I have several variables in the data set, uh, ID of the patient, the age, if they had uh, a, a hip fracture or not, uh, weight, height, waiting time to, um, to get the densitometry, and the measurement of the densitometry, BMD, the bone mineral density in the, in the hip in this case. So uh, as you know, a linear uh, regression is a model that associates a continuous variable to a, a linear expression uh, on of uh, covariates, okay. So there's a functional form um, for the covariates, and I'm going to start just by uh, 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 assuming that x is only one covariate, but you could actually have x might, uh, could represent several covariates, okay. But for now, so for simplicity, I'm just going to use one covariate, uh, and in that case, one example of a linear model would be the simple linear regression uh, expressing this. Um, in this first equation, so f of x, the functional form, would be beta 0 plus beta 1 x, okay? Uh, I can have other uh, 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 forms um, uh, for, for f involving the same variable, actually with transformations, let's say beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x squared, uh, and this is still a linear model, all despite the quadratic term uh, of the covariate, or for example, beta 0 plus beta 1 log of x, logarithm of, of x, and it's still linear because I'm interested in the linearity of the effects, so the linearity on the, on the, the effects of the covariates, so the beta 1, the betas here in the, in, the, in the equation, okay? You can think about this x squared or this log of x as a new variable, okay, call it w, and uh, if you substitute x squared by w, you see that this is still has the linear form, okay? Non-linear uh, e examples are uh, given here on the right side. Uh, so these actually are models used in other areas of statistics, actually in, in health, so in mi microbiology and, uh, and uh, pharmacopoeiology, for example, some of these models. And you see that the, the effect is non-linear, so you cannot, it, it's not uh, um, the association, the effect of the covariates, you cannot say that it's linear. So um, this linear model also extends, just for a bit for the context, extends to what's called generalized linear models. So generalized linear models is a family of, uh, of models um, uh, with a linear expression, so a linear uh, functional uh, form, uh, but instead of the uh, continuous outcome, I can have any type of the outcome and I'm modeling some transformation of the expectation of that outcome, okay? So in the case of the linear model, this, this would be modeling the average of y uh, and g would be the identity function. So you know, I'm not really not trans transforming. So this, is, would be, this would be y bar equals to beta zero plus beta one and so on, okay? Notice that I'm talking about y bar and not y because I suppressed the, the error term here. So this is this, the, the general expression for generalized linear models. If, for example, I'm talk, uh, g is the logarithm um, and I have expression like this, this is, the, this is the model that is usually called the Poisson regression. So the Poisson regression is also a generalized linear, linear model. So when y is a count, uh, or if y, for example, is binary uh, and I use this uh, transformation of the expectation of y. So remember, if y is binary, the expectation of y is, is, is the probability of y. Um, so the probability uh, over 1 minus probability, so the odds 
and then I do the logarithm of that and if I express this as uh, a linear um, um, uh, a linear uh, function of the covariates uh, x, y, this too is a generalized linear model which we usually call logistic uh, regression. Okay, so suppose that we are interested in, in, uh, in um, building a prediction model. We are really going to be interested here in prediction uh, for the bone mineral density uh, uh, using age. So I have here a scatter plot of the 169 observations of, our, of the data set uh, that I mentioned at the beginning. And you might know that uh, the um, uh, people, when get older, uh, tend to lose bone mineral density women faster than, than men um, but um, so you, ex we, you expect to see some, some, some uh, uh, loss of uh, bone mineral density with age. So how can we express this relationship between age and BMD? Well you, you could propose many uh, models with different functional forms um, but we're going to uh, uh, try out, we're going to, to start with a, a simple model, simple linear re regression, expressing the bone mineral density as a, a linear function of age, okay? Beta 0 plus beta 1 age and some error. Um, and uh, I'm sure you are aware that beta 0 would be the average BMD for someone with age 0, which is not uh, really uh, meaningful and beta 1 is the increase in the average BMD per age. Okay, so the slope of this line. And then the error term that really exp uh, expresses the difference between the observation to what is predicted by the model, which is given by the, this point. And I'll show you this in the next slide. Okay, but the way we're going to, um, to proceed to find this line, the regression line, is really to try to minimize all these uh, errors or distances or residuals that I said um, uh, from from the observation to, the, to the, the the line given by the model okay so for example with this line here if this is if this is our uh, uh, fitted model um, the point indicated there is the predicted BMD by the model predicted by the model for an individual that is 39 year old Okay, but in fact, you know, this the, the, the we have one observation for someone who's 39, which is a bit higher, so that's going to be the this residual going to be the difference of the observed BMD and the, the one predicted by the model. Okay, so in terms of uh, the entire data set, the problem is going to be to sum the squares, just the squares is to get rid of the, the, the sign, sum the, the squares and try to minimize. Uh, this this sum, okay. So I'm going to try to find the the line that minimizes that that sum. And how do I do that? Well, you know, I'm fitting lines and I'm looking at the residual sum of square. And you see that you know it goes up and down. So I'm looking to the minimum residual uh, uh, sum of squares, and it's going to be here. Okay. So this is the best uh, the the best line that is fitted to the model and as you know, you know, this is a very simple problem mathematically. You can actually get a, a closed form solution for beta 0 and beta 1, and this is given by what is called ordinarily squares. So <clears throat> once you find this line, this is your estimation of the true relationship, right? So I'm going to, instead of using uh, F, which would correspond to, to the to true F, I'm going to say that I found an uh, an approximation of f, an estimation of f, that is given by the uh, intercept of this line and the slope of this line. So better, better not hat and better one hat. Okay. Uh, we can now, now extend this idea of a simple linear regression to uh, a multiple predictors. So rather than having just the age, I can have you know multiple variables. I have here one more and we can still uh, plot uh, the representation of this model. I'm fitting basically um, a, a, a plane to uh, the association between age, weight, 
with BMD. But if I start adding more variables, I start going higher in dimensions and you know, it's hard to represent hyperplane given that, that we are limited to uh, three dimensions. Uh, we could also think about uh, fitting um, more complicated models, not only in terms of adding covariates, but also transformations, for example, of age. So we could think about fitting a model with age, age square, age cube, and we could go on maybe. Okay. So how can I how can I compare different types of models that I can propose, uh, and then use the data to 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 find estimates for the the parameters associated with with that model? Well, we have different statistics in in uh, in classical in classical courses. You would be talking about you know the R square. We're also going to mention that, but a lot of goodness of fit statistics. But I want to focus on this mean square error that we're going to to use throughout the course because it's a, a, a very a generalizable measure okay and the mean square error is just the average of the differences uh, between the observed value and the predictions squared okay um, so if f hat uh, xy is the predicted model for a, an individual with a certain x or a certain uh, uh, set of x's Okay, and the model is going to, to, to spit a prediction for, for an individual with those axes, and then I compare it to the what actually the, the, the individual, the person, um, what value the person had, the y, uh, y, y. Excuse me. So uh, I do this for all the observations, and I get, as the name said, an average uh, uh, error of the squares differences. Okay. Uh, the R square, as I said, it's one one measure that is commonly used in linear regression to uh, to measure the prediction performance of the model. In fact, it's just a rescaled version of mean square er error. So the R square, uh, there's several ways of, of deriving the R square, but uh, this, the R square is one minus mean square error divided by the variance of y. Okay, you might uh, you might want to spend a few minutes trying to derive this if you like to the, this type of challenges. But as you know, uh, the R square is um, uh, affected by the number of, of covariates. So every time you add something to the model, the R square cannot go down, can only stay the same or go up. And usually it go, goes up even, even uh, if it's just by a bit, right? It can be just by noise, but usually go, goes goes out. So you can increase, increase artificially uh, the R square just by adding uh, variables to the model. So uh, an alternative to this is to use the adjusted R square and the adjusted R square penalizes the R square by the number of parameters in the model. Okay, so basically you put it, you put in one, one extra variable and but you pay a tax in terms of R square for having that variable in the, in the model. Uh, and so if the, the variable is not really adding Suffici sufficient R square, the adjusted R square is it, it will uh, uh, decrease. Okay, so this is sort of a correction uh, to take into account the number of covariates that you have in the model. Uh, so here uh, I have for the different models that uh, uh, that we talked, um, and just using the variable age again. You know, as I said, I mentioned before the one model with a variable weight, but just for comparison, these three models uh, with polynomial functions of age, so uh, a linear, quadratic, and uh, cubic age. And here you can see the mean square error. It's it's very similar. Basically, it's going to be different in terms of the, the fourth decimal place, but I rounded here th three decimal places. You can see the R square always goes up, but in terms of the adjusted R square, the quadratic, uh, effect the, the quadratic age or the the model with quadratic age has the the better r square uh, but when you add uh, cubic age the r square now decreases so from these three models and using this uh, adjusted r square the quadratic seems to to be the the best prediction model okay so the last thing i'm going to show you that if we can actually try uh, uh, multiple models with uh, a higher degree in terms of uh, polynomial. Okay, so I'll, uh, here I have up to H 
to the power of 20, so uh, a, a large model, and then I've computed the R square and the adjusted R square for all those models. And as you can see, uh, the R square, uh, the R square is going always going up, okay, and gets to point 20 with just the variable age. Um, but the adjusted R square sort of uh, peaks here at uh, a polynomial of seven and then starts coming down and real, there's really no improvement, okay? So with the adjusted R square uh, itself you, and using this, um, this criteria, I said seven, no, sorry, it would be six, I think. Uh, the R square, adjusted R square would propose a polynomial of six, okay? But there might be some overfitting here and this is something that we'll see in other, in other, um, uh, in other uh, uh, modules of the unit, in particular other ways of, of evaluating the mean square error using cross-validation uh, or bootstrap. So this is uh, what I wanted to say in terms of linear regression. Make sure that uh, uh, you, you read uh, the, the chapters that I've proposed and also uh, follow the, the, um, the guided exercise or the lab uh, on, on linear regression and solve the proposed exercises.